YouTube. We're here today with the CM Pro build series, which is going to be a little longer than usual. I know that sounds impossible, but um, got some Lexan scissors so that we can cut out the plastic here, uh, the Lexan for the canopy. And since you can't replace it, I'm going to err on the safe side, make sure we do everything right. Got some micro push rod systems here um, with sleeves. I think they might be a little bit too small. Not 100% sure. Um, I got them in hopes that I could use those for the rudder just to really hold down on weight. I looked at some carbon fiber rods today thinking I could potentially attach the carbon fiber rods to the stuff that I was given with the kit. And the only thing I don't like about this is that the sleeve is only, you know, it's only so long. Just not really a big deal because I can actually attach the sleeve up here and then attach the sleeve back here. Um, because there is, you know, there's access holes back here. So we can actually get that glued on the inside. Possibly. I say possibly. But either way, that's one option and then uh, also had this control rod here um, I bought this stuff to hopefully use on the servos on the wings and then of course we'd be shorting these pretty significantly and then I got thread all here and hypothetically we'll be using these links to go on either end and that's the same as they were out of these things, so I had to go with this set just to get five more of these things, which is really annoying. But hey, if hobby shops want to stay in business, they're always complaining that we buy things online and then you show up and nothing's in stocks. It's like, what are you supposed to do? So anyway, that's going to be for the linkage here uh, from the servo pocket here up to the actual elevator. And then the rudder, of course, is going to be through the the fuselage coming out one side or the other. I haven't decided. Depends on where things need to be clear. And um, of course the servos are going to just need a very short linkage. So my hope is what I can do is I can cut these off and then treat them like thread all and then just have that little linkage right here between where the servo mounts and the actual uh, control member. And so then I've got adjustment on both sides, which is kind of nice. You'll be able to get plenty of adjustment for your your coarse thread. Your coarse um, trim adjustment needs. So also I got, I got this here the other day, which is going to be used for the canopy. It's Formula 560 canopy glue. It's supposed to stay nice and flexible. I had planned on using a 30-minute epoxy or this 30-minute FlexiCure. And today, instead, I went and picked up some 15-minute epoxy. I was reading on the package. It does say that it's supposed to maintain its flexibility a little bit more. It's just your Bob Smith Industries stuff. 15-minute epoxy. Here, I'll grab the package so you guys can see. This process is just kind of... This stuff adds up. It's not expensive for one particular item. It's just when you're having to buy, like, 20 or 30 items, this crap adds up quick. And next thing you know, you're spending two, three hundred bucks on a plane that only costs you two hundred bucks. So anyway, the objective tonight is going to be to do some bench testing on this collet, which I extended. Uh, I opened it up from four millimeters to five, and I want to see if there's a wobble in it. And if there's a wobble in it, we're going to take it out. In order to get to that point, I need to bind the receiver to my transmitter. And we need to figure out our ESC, which I've got this for a bench test. We're going to set up a bench test. This is just a watt meter. Tell us how much wattage we're going to be putting through the system. Got a 40 amp ESC. We got a 60 amp ESC. This only has a 3 amp BEC rated at 5 volts, 3 amps, okay? This is an SBC, and that's rated at 5.5 uh, volts at 4 amps. Significantly better power. However, in our recently crashed 
glider, we actually had this 40 amp with a uh, 5 volt at 3 amp. So this here is the same as the Aerostar. So 5 volts at 3 amps. And the idea being is that this one here, since it's rated the same, it was actually a little bit heavier. I decided I would go with, you know, in terms of the choices, I'm going to go with this choice and this choice. And if I'm not satisfied with this or this, because there's a pretty big weight difference here, I'm going to get a YEP that has a 5.5 volt at 5 amp SBC, which is like a lot better. But it's also significantly more expensive to the tune of about 50% more than either of these. 50% uh, more um, to the equivalent size. It's a 40 amp um, with, of course, the BC, which is riding on there too. So that being said, I got the soldering iron hot. Um, objective one, we got to get all the electronic components uh, soldered on here. And then on this one, we've already got the electronic components soldered on, but they're the wrong size because we need this bigger uh, size. Um, bullet connector. This is what came with the motor. So we're just going to dump that stuff out for now and we'll just grab this. And this is the ones from Hobby King here. Incidentally, this is the part number of the the ones from Hobby King. Comes with a male and female counterpart. And then these are the ones um, male and female counterpart again that I'm going to use as an adapter between this and the bigger size because I don't want to rebuild this and find out it's the wrong size but if I put it in the plane that way I'm going to rebuild it okay so this is the factory option that came with the motor just to show you that it fits nicely and that pinched me that hurts and then this is the aftermarket variety from Hobby King as you can see they both work well I have no problem with one versus the other I really don't care um, they're close enough for what we're doing but I just wanted to show you that there is a difference and that difference is one came with it and one didn't. So the first step today, obviously get the iron hot, get your solder ready to go, get all these little screws back in the bag. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get some heat shrink out. Uh, since we don't know the colors, we're not going to really bother with colors today. We're just probably just going to do all black and all black is generally a safe bet. Um, but if you're really wanting to color code them, that's fine. Well, the thing is, <laughs> these aren't color coded, so I don't really care. I'll just make a mark with a marker and just go with the all black colors. So got a bunch of different sizes in here. Obviously, you want to use the right size for the job. So this is like it's five millimeter. Should be plenty good. Just used it the other day. Yeah, that'll be fine as long as you don't get the solder too thick on there. So we'll just consume this for this project and that's a Hobby King product. I do not know the part number because I don't think it came in a part numbered bag. So the first things first when you're doing the soldering, super easy. Again, this is all part of the project for that CM Pro um, glider. First thing I usually do when I'm doing this is I'll grab um, forceps, hang on to them that way and that makes it a lot easier because it will help to manage the heat and dissipate a little better. When you first get ready to solder, clean the tip, put a little tip cleaner on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by getting in here, getting a little bit of solder on the, the soldering iron, touching it to the work, and just flowing the solder in. Okay. And you'll notice I'm not even looking in the hole. I don't really care. I'm just going to show you this time so you can see what's going on a little better. Just want to make sure it doesn't bubble up at the front. Okay, so we're just going to kind of fill that hole about halfway. And then these are already tinned, but I, <laughs> I'm i not going to trust their tinning. I'm going to tin it some more. Put a little more tin in there. Keep it in mind, you add weight and lead is heavy. It is a heavy metal. Not just because it'll kill you. It's actually heavy. Okay, so it's getting hot. We're going to let that solder push out of the opening.
you know what I'm gonna actually strip this back just a little bit and get a little extra length out of that for more contact area so take another quarter inch or so off of there for those of you overseas that'd be I said a quarter inch didn't I I meant less whatever it's like two millimeters you get the idea you can just look at the video and then figure out what it is so we're just going to take off enough so that um, we have maximum penetration and contact. So take the cool one, grab the cool one, stick it in there. Do we have any sheath exposed? Yeah, just a little bit. That's okay. Not going to hurt anything. We're going to have heat shrink over the top too. Okay, very good. Might have done a little much on that. You can always take that heat shrink and pull it up a little bit. Or not, not the heat shrink, the sheath there. Okay, so now we should be able to do this real quick. Now the idea behind um, getting this built up is we don't know for sure we're going to use this particular uh, electronic speed control, but that's okay. We don't have to necessarily use this electronic speed control. At some point we're going to have to use this. Uh, we're going to have to do this to use it with another motor. So that thing's cool enough to where I can get that hole rotated up to the top. The hole will expel excess solder. So we're going to overfill this this time because I don't want to dink around with it a bunch. So make contact area, get a little solder in there, just let it ride in until it looks flush. Leave it, let it cool for a second, heat it again, penetrate the solder slowly. You don't want to splash it out in your face. See what I do? I just flick it. If you control it, it won't control you. You know, it's trying to slide away from you, so I'm going to hold it back here. Back here a ways. If you hold it right at the tip, you'll get burned. Let it cool for a second or two. When that stuff looks uh, satin, as opposed to being super shiny, that usually means it's set up enough that you can let go of your workpiece. And we're going to move on to the next one. Very simple process. Once you've done it a few times, it kind of gets, gets easier. It's like riding a bike. Um, if you're afraid to solder, don't get into this hobby. You should do it constantly. Um, and to be honest with you, you shouldn't really be afraid of it. It's not a real hard thing to do. It is a skill that you learn over time you get better at. And if you use a uh, more powerful soldering iron, it doesn't make it quite a bit easier too. This this is a, this is a 40 watt iron. It's very very nice got the lights on it helps a lot to see and if you try to use a 30 or a 20 watt iron just forget it you might as well not even try just don't try get a 40 watt iron and use it you'll thank me someday now this time I'm heating up and letting the solder wick into the actual work on the wire here because I overfilled just like we did on the first one the difference is this time I'm going to actually let the, wa the wire wick up some of the excess. It's being kind of a pain though, so I'm going to try to encourage it by grabbing it with a hot iron and pulling it up. doesn't always work, but we're going to try it. Now the other trick you can do is you can keep this work hot, and then you can actually apply your solder from the top to the point where it drips, and then your work will be cleaner. See that's going to drip here in a second. And then once you get your drip, you can grab it with your soldering tip, tap the tip. Because like I was saying, if you if you let that drip sit there, you make it really hard to get your heat shrink over it. So we're going to let that cool for just a second. I don't like the angle of attack from that wire. I want it to be square. So I'm going to redo it and just heat it back up a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to let it sit for a second. Once it turns satin looking, yep, it's satin. So now we can let go. And it's going to cool for a second longer, obviously. It's not cool yet. If you grab that, you'd be burned. Okay, same thing here. Third piece. Whoops, sorry guys, I bumped you. Okay, so now we're going to take and do this. On the other ESC, we've got kind of a different project we're going to be doing, the, the little adapters. And when I say the little adapters, I mean we're going to actually take and... Uh, I'm doing this. 
there we go. We're going to take and we're actually going to build this size down to the other size without any wire in the middle, uh, preferably. If we can get it to work well. Okay, then we're going to take this wire. It worked a little better to have solder in it first. Even though we don't really need a lot extra solder here. It just flows better if you have the flux on it. And the flux is the like the oily stuff that comes out of the middle of the rosin, rosin core is what they call that. Okay, so heating the solder, letting the stuff work together. Now we're just gonna hold this for a second. I'm gonna try to get that little drip off of there. See how it smokes a lot? That's usually when you're in your flux. The flux will smoke a little bit more than the, the solder itself. A lot of times the impurities will get into those drips too. Okay, waiting for that to turn a satin finish. Okay, good. Now we can go ahead and release this. So now at this point you could conceivably say, well, don't heat shrink it. What if you don't end up using this one? And then you can easily get them off next time. Well, that's true. You could do that, but then, you know, what if you short it out while you're testing? That would suck. And believe me, it would. Okay, so we're going to strip back just a little bit more of these. I don't know if I've told you this, guys, before. Um, pretty sure I have, but maybe you haven't seen all my videos. There's only like 700 plus of them. Um, I keep these little things, and then you can use them to as like little clevis retainers. And they actually work pretty decent for different size clevises. Um, maybe not quite as good as gas tube, but uh, personally, I don't have gas tube because I don't use gas powered stuff. So, then we're going to take this one. This one's just to dissipate heat, give us something to hang on to. And then we're going to we're going to see how this sizes up. See how it's got a bump on it? I'm just going to squish it. And then we're going to stuff it in. Squish it and stuff it. Yep. Okay, so you see we've got a little bit more we could strip back. Um, might as well. This is a pretty high current draw application, so the more contact area, the, the happier things are going to be. We're going to do this a little bit different than we usually do. I don't like doing it this way because it's hard to guarantee you've got a good solder penetration. Um, but we're going to fill it up shallow. And that way we're displacing less solder from the hole because it's quite a bit of solder to put down in there. And then have it all just come pooping right back out. Solder's not free after all, but you just I'm really more concerned with the solder joint at the end of the day than the extra 15 cents in solder, you know. Okay, so we've got that down to where it's bottoming out. So we're just going to hold that in there. Now we're going to take our solder and we're going to make sure our tip is really clean and shiny as clean, right? Then we're going to hold it against this side to start transferring the heat. Okay? So we're holding it against the side of the wire instead of the back side of the brass because the copper or gold, whatever it is. Because if you start with holding the other side, then the solder will like to kind of stick to the outside of the case instead of the inside, which is where you want the contact point to be made. So now we're just walking this in just a little bit at a time. You can see as I advance it. And the idea is you really want it to suck down in there, but it doesn't always do it right away. you got to give it a second to work. Because that heat has to then transmit down. Now don't do it so long that you melt the connector. Because even these XT60s, you know, and your Deans and whatever brand or variety you like to use, they will eventually melt. And once they're melted, they're pretty much, they let go of the pin right away. That's the first thing they do. Once you let go of the pin, then you can create a dangerous condition. So you can also see that our drip is not form it, formed yet to where it's going to drip down off of there. So you want to heat this for a second, see if we can get it to flow back into the connection, which we got that to suck back in there. Just by rotating that wire just a you know, little teeny bit, like 30 minutes on a clock, you know. 
Okay, so we're done with that joint. So now we're going to do the other joint. Ah, son of a gun. I forgot the heat shrink. I knew I was going to forget something. I was like, why is this going so smooth? Well, it's because I forgot the heat shrink. Dang it. Okay, we're going to heat this back up. Okay, we're just going to let it work for a minute. you got to let it heat all the way down to the bottom. Still heating, still heating. Finally, it's releasing. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. That was my bad. I just totally forgot. Okay, so heat shrink. Um, in this case, oh, we got a little chunk that's already cut off. Why don't we use that first? And um, on this, I like to use the smaller stuff if I can get away with it, if it'll fit over the connector. So I have to try. I can't remember if this stuff is big enough. I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't think it is. Nope, it's not. So we can't use that. Obviously can't use the other piece that I pulled out. Can't use those, those are too small, but this looks like it might be the right size. This might be the right size. Because the XT60s have a certain size, and I always use the same stuff, but I just used up the last of my bag that I had been um, okay, so that stuff will work. So this will work. So when I cut this, I'll actually put that piece that I slipped over on the other end. Okay, so part number on that. I do have a part number if you want it. Come on. Okay, so that's the Hobby King part number for the black. And then the Hobby King part number for the red is that. Let's make sure now that we've focused in on those parts that we have the correct size. I try to make them even. It just looks nicer when you're done. This isn't all about looks, guys. This is about functionality. Yep, that'll fit. Okay, good. So, that'll slip over the red. Keep it in mind, if that gets too dang hot, it's going to shrink right down where it is. And that's what you got to be careful about. So if you're concerned, you can take some Windex and spray it on these. And that will help to cool it. In fact, I might not, I might not have an option on this. I may have to do that on this install. Just because of the nature of the solder joint. And it's fairly close to the work. So, Alright, getting back to where we started. Sorry about the delay on that, everybody. So we're going to heat this back up, throw a little fresh solder in. We're going to heat this back up. We're going to throw a little fresh solder on the wire itself, right at the tip. We're going to walk it back, just one little pass. Okay, very good. So now, see I've got the forceps sitting under my solder station. That'll help to kind of hold things in place while we're working. Okay, heating up this connector quite hot. We gotta get in here where we can get a little bit of solder to help bridge the gap. Okay, we got good contact area. Now we should be able to slowly start penetrating with this. Just one touch of the solder to make a, a bridge. Get the heat to the work. Takes a second for this to happen. Okay, now we're heating up the wire and the work. Rotating, 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 and leave it. Except I want it to be rotated here for my final position. All right, that's a very good joint. That's going to be solid. And while we're waiting, while this is not totally shrunk down yet, I'm just going to put a couple of drips on there, and that's going to help it to keep from overheating. Plus, that'll lubricate the line. You can see how fast it evaporates. That's how hot that wire is. Yeah, pretty hot still. The other thing you'll notice is that I have a bit of a drip on this side, so I'm going to try to get rid of that right now. A couple different ways to do that. You can use solder wick, or you can just heat it like this. Try to walk it around to where the work is. I don't think we're going to get so lucky with that. We're going to use solder wick today. Solder wick comes on a roll like this. Uh, it's super inexpensive. If you still have radio shacks, you can sometimes get it there. Of course, most of the radio shacks are out of business. Or they're just like cell phone stores now. That's all assuming, of course, you're in North America. 
Who the heck knows where you are, though? Just be careful, because this is where you end up melting your stupid connectors. Yeah, it's getting pretty freaking hot. Come on. There we go. It's finally heated up to where it's going to try to pull it away, which it did effectively. And of course, that's an unfortunate thing because then I bump, I bump the XT60 connector and I get those nasty bumps on there. And then it looks like some idiot soldered it, which really ticks me off. I'm going to take this while it's hot and just try to straighten that out. Try to hide the evidence. You see what I'm talking about, guys? Where it melted the edge of the... I hate that. It's so frustrating. Okay, so we're going to move on to the other side. We'll go to the positive side now. Okay. And while we're... It's actually pretty decently cool. It's just knocking off any bumps. So we can go ahead and slip that over. Bring that all the way down. Grab our little lighter. Heat shrink that. Paying special attention to get this part. This part here heat shrinked. Because then that'll that thinner area will hang on to the heat shrink so it doesn't slip back easily. Okay. Um, all right, cool. So I'm going to actually let go of this and I'm going to grab it from the other side. And what that does for us is we can flip that ESC the other way around like this and get a better view at our work. Which I don't know if you guys weld, but if you've ever welded, that's like half the battles. You've got to get your body comfortable. So that you aren't always trying to lean funny and stuff like that. Once you're comfortable, then you can you can sit there and make nice little ovals or circles or whatever it is you're trying to do. You just a touch more off of this red. That, about a millimeter. So stick that into the work, let it sit in there. We've already got the heat shrink on, verified that. Okay, we're going to get some heat transferred by bridging the gap with some solder. Let it suck into the wire, let it suck into the hole. That being the socket for the actual positive lead. Now we're going to heat this back up. We're going to pull up on the red wire to get it centered where we want. Let that work for a second. We need quite a bit more solder in there yet. Hold it until it's whew, until you can't handle it anymore. Like in that case, that was about to burn me. All right, cool. So now um, we'll just. Oh yeah, she's warm. Let it cool for just a second before we try to slide this wire, uh, this heat shrink down. Man, that thing's nice and toasty. Okay, then we'll just. Lubricate that so it goes down all the way. And it's satisfying to heat shrink, isn't it? Okay, so we got that heat shrink down. Oh no, did it bubble? I think there was some fluid in there, so it bubbled. Not a big deal. Okay, so now we can actually unplug this. Not necessarily discard, but we can lay that to the side. 
Now on the other side, let's go ahead and heat shrink over these. Even though I understand um, there's a possibility we may... Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to get much, much more than one full piece on this. I just cut it about where the Y is. Remember, the weight matters on this. So what I would normally do is I would go just a just a hair past where I know I need it. Okay, so you see it's just just leaning over the edge. And if you're careful, you can actually shrink that first portion down and then slip it back. It doesn't always work, but in this case, yeah, see it's moving for me. You can spin it. Spin it right to where you want it, so it's flush. Then you can go ahead and heat it some more, make sure it's not going to move. Then do your thing. Alright guys, so you get the right idea. This is basically what's going to happen. I'm just noticing we're going to run out of memory here in about maybe 10 seconds. So if I do, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And in the meantime, we'll go ahead and...